Do you know the song, you sweet people? Jesus, oh, how sweet the name. Jesus, every day the same. Jesus, let all saints proclaim his worthy praise forever. I just been, it's been in my mind, you know, when I sat down and, you know, I do this wonderful time with you daily. And sometimes, you know, just before I say my hellos, I start singing in my mind and my heart, you know. So, hello, and I'm so glad you're with me today. I pray the Lord will use this in a blessed way today to really bless many of you. We're talking about worship in the spirit today. So it's going to be a beautiful teaching. Jesus, oh, how sweet the name. Jesus, every day the same. Jesus, let all saints proclaim His worthy praise forever. You know the song, Chad? Well, maybe I'll teach it to you. <laughs> There's so many beautiful old songs, you know, that, uh, well, hello to Lawrence. They said, I declare yes. Hello to Anita. Jewy says, happy birthday. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you. I turned 68 today, December 3rd, 1952. I was born early in the morning in Jaffa, Israel. And uh, I've had a lot of you sweet people send me already happy birthday wishes. So thank you from my heart to your heart. And uh, so you've been wonderful. You know, we have a great family. We've, de we've developed a great family. So, hello to Trisha, hello to Pepe. <laughs> Goodness, so many of them are saying happy birthday. Thank you so much. Hello to Anna from Brazil. Hello to Nabi, Nambi, excuse me. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle says, hey, it's the birthday boy. <laughs> You're funny, Michelle. Thank you. Hello to Kanisha. Oh, look at all the hearts, my goodness. Hello to Kaluli and Mohan. <laughs> Sometimes I laugh when I see what people put, you know, the little things, they, they put the hearts in the little different signs. It's so, so cute. Hello to Zara. Zara says, please pray for my head and eyes pain. Father, in Jesus' name, touch her today. Let this be her day for a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hello to Mohan. So many of you, wow. Well, Lord, we thank you for what you're going to show us today. I give you praise for this wonderful day. Now, Lord, I pray that you'll speak to your people today and let them understand this most wonderful truth. I'm going to talk today about worship in the Spirit. Uh, God created the soul as the seat of our personality, as our seat of our conscience. So the soul is linked <clears throat> through the body to the visible world. And the soul is connected to the spirit, to the spiritual world. So think about, you know, here's your spirit, here's your body, here's your soul. And through what was that? Okay, I see. And <laughs> he, he was testing the phone, God bless him. Anyway, so one more time. Are you, are you listening, Chetty? I thank you. Yes, he was just making sure everything is working, God bless him. Anyways, spirit, body, soul is right here in the center. Through the spirit, he's linked to God. Through the body, he's linked to the world. So, um, the soul <clears throat> has to decide whether to be linked to the body and the world or to the spirit and to God. So <clears throat> at the fall, Adam made that decision for all of us. Please hear that. At the fall, Adam made that decision. That's why the Lord came to change everything for us so we can make that decision now, not Adam. So this is really important. 
Adam yielded his soul to the, to the body. And when that happened, the body became his God. The body began to control the soul. So like had he yielded to the spirit that God put in him, then that spirit would have yielded to the Lord. And then that would have, the Lord would have ruled his life. Instead, Adam yielded to the body. And that's why Satan knew that. And that's why Satan came in and said to the woman, Eve, at the time, he said, you know, he was questioning if God really meant what he said, which, of course, God always does. And when Adam yielded to that temptation, he was really yielding to the body. Because remember, she saw it was pleasant to the eye. It was something the body wanted, you know, the fruit, I mean. And then he saw this, the same. He yielded to that, and he came under its bondage. And ever since then, ever since then, uh, humanity <clears throat> has been a slave to the body. Those that don't know the Lord have been slaves to the body. And the spirit of Adam, the minute he yielded to his body, and the body became his boss, the, the, his spirit lost its destiny, and his spirit died. So think about the spirit of Adam lost its destiny in God, its place in God, and its rule and its authority. And the spirit became dormant, a dormant dead power. And the spirit of man became basically a struggling captive instead of that ruling principle in the life of men. Because now the body became the boss. The body became the ruling principle, the king, you know, the body. And today, to this day, humanity is, is ruled by what the flesh wants, what the body wants. And so since then, uh, man has been called what? the natural man. And in the Bible, if you look at 1 Corinthians, let's look at 1 Corinthians. We're going to look at chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 14. This is really, really good and important that we un understand how the Word of God looks at humanity. It says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, their foolishness to him. So you see now, when, when you and I were saved, we stopped being the natural man. So I and you are no longer controlled by our body because what happened is when our spirit was born again, when our spirit came, came back into its place of authority, we yielded our spirit to who? To the Lord. The soul said, no more, body. I'm not going to let you be my boss. And the soul we were saved. That's what it, why, why, what means by my soul was saved. Saved from what? Saved from, from the rule of the world. Saved from the rule of the body. Now the soul says, I'm going to give myself to Jesus. The spirit yields to the Lord. Now the Lord rules our life, not the body ruling our life. But still talking about the natural man, that's what Paul called him, because the soul... Um, now, choosing the body uh, chose all the attributes that belong to the body, to the flesh, and came under what? Its power. So, to this day, when you read the Bible, you have to see the many different scriptures about the spirit and the soul. For example, uh, let's look at, uh, because there's a lot of things in the Word of God we, we kind of miss it. So this is why today I'm talking about worship in the Spirit. Because many people are, who say they're worshiping are actually worshiping in the body, but it's not true worship. Because Jesus said that the Father seeks those who worship in Spirit. So a lot of the worship today that you hear is worship is not true worship. It's physically born, flesh born, the mind is involved, the flesh is involved, it's all really uh, emotional. So it's not spiritual worship. They call it worship, but it's not. 
And I'm, I'm going to show you the difference today. But first, let's look at this. There is, for example, there's two kinds of wisdom. There is a fleshly wisdom and there is a spiritual wisdom. So Paul talks about that, and I'm going to show you both. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 2. Look at verse 12 uh, and, and 13, which, of us, which is about the wisdom of the flesh. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know that things are freely given to us of God. So this is very, very uh, important. Here there is a spiritual wisdom, and, and also there is one of the flesh. Now we have not re received the spirit of the world. We have not received the wisdom of the world but the wisdom which is of God. Now let's keep reading verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. So notice now, he connects both, verse 12 and 13, the spirit of the world is what? Man's wisdom. As it says so in verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So from these two verses, we see that there is a wisdom that is of the flesh, and there is a wisdom which is of the spirit, verse 12 and 13. So in Colossians, in Colossians, Paul talks about the spiritual side. Here we saw the physical side, but let's look at Colossians chapter one, and let's look at verse nine. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with all the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So there is a physical understanding. There is a spiritual understanding. So when someone reads the Bible and says, well, I know it, what they don't know is they may be knowing it in the flesh. Because knowing the Word of God has to be spiritual, otherwise there's no power in your life. So a lot of people who go to universities or who go to colleges, who know the Bible better than many Christians do, but they don't know it spiritually. They only know the Bible intellectually. Therefore, they don't understand it, and they deny its power. This is why they just did a study. 21% of those who call themselves Christians in America believe the Bible. Only 21%. 7 out of 10, 7 out of 10. Now, this was just released. The Barna Group released it. Seven out of 10 Americans say they are Christians. So you say, well, that's good news. Not really, because only 21% of them believe the Bible. So you have people who say, well, I'm a Christian, but it's, it's, it's all flesh. It's all the mind. It's all something that is not spiritual. But only 21% of them really believe the Bible and see it as a, spiritual book that affects us spiritually. It's our spiritual life and food. So there's also a service of God uh, that trusts only in the flesh, that glorifies the flesh. And there is that which glorifies the Lord. So when you look at the Bible, there are people who believe they're serving God, but they're really serving the flesh. Because the Bible talks about that. Let me show it to you. Let's look at uh, Galatians chapter 6. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 13. It says this. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Here are people who are serving the flesh. 
not the Lord. And these are religious people that Paul is talking about in the book of Galatians who were trying to tell the believers who were Jewish believers who were saved and Gentile believers who were saved to be circumcised in the flesh. So he said all they really want is that they may glory in the flesh. They're serving the flesh. But then you see people who are serving the Lord and serving him in the spirit. So you look at Philippians chapter 3, and then you look at verse 3, and here's what it says. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit. So you see in Galatians there are people who are getting circumcised, who are religious, but they're really worshiping or serving God, I should say, in the flesh. But Paul says we are in Philippians. So Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. We are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit. And we rejoice in Christ Jesus and we have no confidence in the flesh. We don't trust the flesh. We don't want the flesh to have any part of our walk with God. So there's also a fleshly mind and a spiritual mind. Do you know, do you know that there are actually three minds in each one of us? You and I have three minds. We have the brain, which is totally connected to the physical world. Then we have the soulish mind. And that soulish mind is connected to our emotions and the, the things of the soul. And then you have the spiritual mind. So Paul says, renew the spiritual mind. When Paul says renew your mind, he wasn't saying renew your brain. Renew your spiritual mind. Well, how do you do that? Well, it, God's word has to come through the brain, then affect the soulish, then affect the spiritual. So frankly, you have three minds. Many people don't, 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 don't even think about that. All right, let me prove it to you. When someone dies, do they still have, have, have a mind? Of course. Do spirits have mind? You bet. Do demons have mind and intellect? You bet. Do angels have mind? Of course. They, they, they have intellect. So just because a body is dead, it doesn't mean that the mind is gone. And then you have demons, or you have people who die, unbelievers, who keep their mind. Which mind do they keep? The soul. <laughs> you got it. But the spiritual mind is dead in them because the spiritual mind died with the fall of man. But our mind came alive when our spirit came alive. The spiritual mind I'm talking about. Maybe, may, maybe someday I'll teach on that. It's a most fascinating subject. But there is a fleshly mind. There is a spiritual mind. So let's look at both of them. Colossians chapter 2, verse 18. We're looking at the mind of the flesh. It says, Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So he has a mind that is totally controlled by the flesh. Then you have one that's controlled by the Spirit. Same book, Colossians 1, verse 9, is what it says. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So here you have the spiritual mind. I'm going to get to worship now. Because there, there is that worship which is totally of the flesh, and there is that worship which is of the spirit. Let's look at Colossians, same, same book, chapter 2, verse 18 and 23. Here Paul is talking about the worship that is completely of the flesh. He said, let no man, be, let no man beguile you of your reward. I just read this, but let's read it again. In a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, puffed up by his what? Mind. And look at verse 23 again. He says, which are, which are all to 
perish, which all are to perish, with the using, sorry, that's verse 22, verse 23, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. So here, again, there is a worship that is called of the flesh in verse, also in verse 23. Now, how about worship in the spirit? Well, you all know where, where it's found. John chapter 4. Well, the Lord says to the woman at the well that the Father seeks those who worship in spirit, not in the flesh. God is a spirit. I'm reading John 4, 24. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So, only the Lord came to make that possible. So, at the new birth, when you were born again and your spirit took command and yielded to God, now worship in the, in the spirit really is quite possible. So, how did it begin? When the Lord gave us a new spirit. And to worship in the spirit is to worship in truth. So, all worshipers uh, are not true worshipers. All worshipers are not true worshipers because true worship is when we yield our body and the Lord worships through us. Aha, you got it. So, when I worship, it's all flesh. When Jesus worships through me, that's spirit. And that's in the Bible. That's in God's word. But how do I get there? Well, I have to surrender to him. Now, look what it says in the Psalms. Psalm 22, Psalm 22. So that's why I tell you, a lot of the worship today is not true true worship because they are worshiping. They are not letting the Lord, the Holy Spirit, worship through them. Because it's, it's called worship in the spirit, not worship in the soul. It's not what I decide to worship. I simply yield to the Lord and He worships through me and that worship becomes so alive and so real. Literally, Jesus becomes more real than my body, more real than my life, more real than my disease. That's when people are touched and healed. I've always said, if you want God to heal you, let Jesus become more real than your disease and you'll be healed. How? When you surrender to the Lord, He begins to worship through you and at that moment, He will heal you. See, very, very few people talk, talk about this. Very few people even understand what, what I'm talking about. But let's look at the Psalms. Psalm 22, 22. I will declare your name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I'm going to praise you, Lord. That's Jesus talking. And confirmed in Hebrews chapter 2. That same portion is confirmed in Hebrew chapter 2 and beginning at verse 11. I'm gonna, and of course, I'm going I'm to tell you how it really all happens in just a minute. For both Hebrews 2, 11 and 12. For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren, saying the second Jesus becomes our Savior, he says, I will declare your name to my brethren. Watch this. In the midst of the church will I sing praises unto thee. Meaning through the church. I'm going to praise you. Now, let me, let me tell you the difference. Do you, do you ever feel an anointing when someone worships? That's because they're worshiping in the Spirit. Otherwise, there's no, no anointing. Do you ever hear people worship and it's just nothing but noise? Then it's the flesh. We know it because the anointing comes when the Lord is worshiping. If he's not worshiping through that body or through that people or through that person, there, there, there is no presence. There's just people looking around and they're singing and they're lifting their hands, but there's no life. There's no life. True worship is a live worship. That's what it means by worship in truth because it's not dependent upon feelings. So honest worship, you know, and there are many people, I, let me just say this, I, th I think there are many people who are really honest worshipers, but the mind is occupied with it. Um, the feelings are moved by it. Well, that's not spiritual. Because it's not truth. 
truth is spiritual. And pe when people worship in truth, they're worshiping where the Holy Spirit has taken charge. How do we do that? We wait upon the Lord. It's like the same with prayer. There is prayers in the flesh and prayers in the spirit. How do I pray in the spirit? Wait upon the Lord till he quickens you. And then when he quickens you, he'll, he'll pray through you. Because it says we know not how to pray in Romans as we are. But the spirit himself makes intercession for the saints with groanings that cannot be uttered. Cannot be uttered means it cannot be produced by the mind or the feelings. So let the Lord do it. And when the Lord will do it, something will happen to you. You will begin to walk then in the spirit. Because worship in the spirit leads to walking in the spirit. Well, now your life becomes spiritual and not carnal. So wait, let the flesh be crucified. And now allow the Holy Spirit to fill your heart with that blessed, afresh, spiritual worship. And you'll experience what I'm talking about. I've been there, okay? I've been there. And uh, when I worship the Lord in the spirit and, and, and when I pray, uh, I wait. And then after I wait, there's like a, there's like a break within me. You know, like David said uh, in the Psalms, in Psalm 118, he said, quicken me and then I'll call on you. Quicken me and then I'll call. Well, it's the same thing. Quicken me and then I will worship you. Otherwise, it's not possible. Lord, bring them there. Bring them to that place of such beauty in worship, Lord. In worship, I give you praise. Touch them. Minister to them. In the sweetest name of Jesus, I pray. You know, there's a, there's a song that I really love because it's very anointed. And you know something, true worship is really born uh, out of an experience with God. Never do you, do you find in the, in the scripture or in, in today's world that when there is worship, it's, it's always born out of experience. And you all know this one, worthy is the lamb. The first time I heard this song, I felt such an anointing. And I, I was just drawn. And, and I think sometimes when we want to enter into that worship, you need to play some of that anointed worship, not the stuff that will give you a headache. So the minute these words, you know, you hear them, these people, are worshiping truly and I just pray that God would give you that and I'm sure you have experienced it Lord let it happen in all of our lives in all of our hearts in Jesus name lift your hands and thank him right now bless his holy name he loves you he loves you I worship you, Jesus. You know, once I'm done, I think it'd be great for you to just spend some time with the Lord, you know, and just love Him and worship Him. He's touching some of you right now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, fill them with the Holy Spirit right now. Fill your people with your blessed Holy Spirit. Bless your holy name. Give you praise. Be blessed today. Be blessed. You can, you, can, you can download these amazing worship songs and just begin to worship and let the Lord quicken you as you do. And even after the tape goes off or the song stops, you're still worshiping. Now let's worship him too in giving. Because you know that giving is worship. It's an act of worship. When you do it from your heart, it's an act of worship. 
But when, when, when people give for selfish reasons, it's not an act of worship, it's just giving money. When giving and worship are connected, that's when the harvest comes. Because many, many times people give wanting something back from God. And God still honors that because it's in his word that we'll get the harvest. Because he loves his people and he knows they, they mean well. But if you really wanna, wanna get blessed, like big time get blessed in every way when you give, let it be connected as a worship act rather than as I'm gonna give because I'm looking for something back. So let's do it now. Let's do it as an act of worship. Just say, Father, I worship you today with my offering. I worship you today with my gift. And you can sow it right there online. Benny Hinn Ministries. Hallelujah. I'm just reading that morning. <laughs> or just, you know, go on that platform that, that has the donate button. Or just go to BennyHinn.org. Or simply text it. BHM 45777. Love you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.